it's called motion bombing. When the trains left, then that's when all the riding just came on the streets. I think if the trains were still around, this, you know, the streets was, wouldn't be destroyed and bombed so much. You know, more riders would bomb the trains because the trains move, they go to all different boroughs, and your name travels. And it went from mailboxes inside of buildings, from clubhouses to mailboxes to, 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 to train stations, to trains, getting mobile, getting all city, getting seen from from all the way to 41st of the Bronx to New Lots Avenue, the two line. You know, it got seen all over the place. That's where it was born. When I first met my wife, I did a I Love Catherine for Valentine's Day, because basically I was broke and couldn't get her what I wanted to get her. Took her to the train station, and when she saw I Love Catherine roll by, she just, I mean, I, I didn't have, I needed a roll of paper towels. In May of 1984, we started a program to remove graffiti from the uh, system. And we started line by line with the uh, Kawasaki cars on the number four line with the first cars. People in the industry, in the transit industry, don't feel that New York City is the graffiti capital anymore. In fact, several European countries and, and, and cities out west have been, have been here recently. And we've been showing them how, how we actually, how we fought the battle and how we won the war on graffiti. Transit feels like they won this war against graffiti that took them 20 plus years to win and how many million dollars later, you know what I'm saying? We were, we were teens ruling the system. That was one branch of government, a form of anarchy, out of control, that, that we ran. We've uh, spent years trying to talk them out of painting graffiti. We've spent years out of being nice. And I think the time has come when those of us who are law-abiding citizens uh, say that we're going to take our streets back or else our city is going to go into a state of anarchy. The people who live in my neighborhood, graffiti represents a major eyesore and a major blight. Now is the time to reevaluate our policies when it comes to how we treat graffiti-related offenses. We're going to treat it by criminal court proceedings. And that means that people who are caught desecrating public and private property will be hauled into criminal court, they'll be spending time in jail, and we're going to have punishment fitting the crime for the first time. Now, there's a campaign going on in New York City right now that people want to lock us up for doing graffiti. I want to let people know that there's a difference between graffiti writers and graffiti artists. The ones who write just their name, it's like, you know, Joey was here, that's bullshit, you know what I mean? Who the hell knows who Joey is? Unless Joey keeps doing it. TC5 started like in 69. At first it was a band, and um, it just turned into a writing thing, and it was passed on and on. Yeah, you finish it, man. So they started getting up because, yo, a lot of kids that were sons of, like, gang members and stuff like that, they started, that, they started putting their street name up to represent, you know, like, yo, this is, this is me, this is where I'm from, ba ba. in situations that you know that everyday ordinary person doesn't I encounter know. Yeah, you know what i'm saying up. which which includes the beatdowns, the beatings beat that you hand out <laughs> the things that you've got to do the great lengths you've got to go to get and your name on the train you meet, the so on and so people, forth it don't... instills a certain level of heart we don't really have any any real power amongst ourselves right here and what what graph does it gives you a method gives you a way to be a king in your own world and it gives you a method to be like in the street, in our world, kids, kids just, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they recognize who we are. These people here inspire me because TC5. Well, when I like get older, I want to do stuff like that, and I want to do stuff like that now. Right? Yeah. I came up with my tag 
um, because whenever whenever I was playing in my house, I break like a light or you know make something fall. So I just said, why not Rekka? Got my black book, my stickers. It's like a sketch pad. It's like what you do your stuff in. I got people to sign it, stickers, uh, and like you do pieces in it. Here's some stuff that like friends of mine did. That's that's my name, Buki. It's the best way to spend a Saturday, man. Some people go get a haircut and get their car washed. We pay well. And then party later. Lock them up for life. <laughs> and I'm tired of it. They know better. They know better. No, no. But their parents, you, you, the parents got to pay a fine. Make the pay, make the fine so heavy. Get that's a warning. First they get a warning, then a fine, then the parents and the, then the parents and the child get it. That's all. When you see punishment fitting the crime, right. and you see parents being held responsible, It'll you change. won't see Definitely. the graffiti you see today. I got a message for Giuliani and all his boys. Stop picking on the can kicking. <laughs> War hitting brothers that right, represent brother. ghetto oh, yeah. art and you're die for that shit and stick to that shit to this day because you will never fucking be never represent. Never can't stop us, man. Stop. Stop. Franklin K. Lane Queens, otherwise known as the Queens Hall of Fame. And as you can tell, we're getting busy. We've got the TMB crew, sick crew here in the house. We've got two Will, Swing, N76, Spy, and a host of others. I spell, I spell out my name, T-W-O-I-L just to stretch it out, take more space. Um, basically, basically the purpose to camouflage in a piece is to catch an eye. Once you catch the eye, then you worry about if they can read it or not, you know? I don't care if you can read it or not, I'm having fun, you know? I don't do it for anybody else, you know? If I'm gonna get paid for it, I will do it where uh, It'll be 100% commercial, like, you know, grandma can read it. It won't be no problem. Growing up in New York and being surrounded with a lot of the things I was surrounded with, I knew what I didn't want to do, and this seemed like a safe alternative and still kind of have that gangster image a little bit. addiction. It's the same as drugs, it's the same as uh, smoking, coffee, you know, it's, it's a major addiction. You don't just start writing and then you just turn on one day and say, oh, mm, I'm gonna stop. That don't happen. It's just something that's in your blood, you know.
think of it. I know that there's always going to be another generation coming up and then this is not something that's easily cleaned off as a new slate. You know, there'll always be something else to be put on the canvas of your choice. Well, we're still around. Us, TAT, and a few other crews, we're keeping the tradition alive. We're like more fraternity now. We, we're taking it to the next level. And as you know, we have the next generation in effect. Yeah. All of us are fathers, proud fathers now. We're coming up. And our children are going to learn this. And it's not going to die. It's just going to multiply. It's going to learn. It's going to evolve and transform. I'll probably be painting till I, you know, till like I'll be like 80 years old in a wheelchair, going up to a wall with a spray can. For all those people broadcasting over there, we're gonna show you that we right here. You know what time it is? It ain't funny. It was three back in 1983, and I was doing it in four to five. Get on the microphone. The children of the ghetto must survive. Co-star will rock the beat and I'll rock the mic because it's just like that tonight. Crown Heights, the low life got beat deep. You know what time it is, don't sleep on Japan. Who's the man? Goddamn, on the train, Co-star, Gold, Bones, Chino, Juice, West End, got uh, babe, King uh, Swing. Kings of Swing, Still baby, the doing boy. their thing. TC5 is definitely in effect, we and we out here for Ooh. life. Out. You're fight. not going to get rid of Giuliani, you can't stop us, baby, because we're out here before you. <laughs> Neste mandag til samme tid møter vi 70 år gamle Dixie Evans som skal snakke om sin fortid som eksotisk dronning i Amerikas gyldne striptisdager.